three. Oh, there we go. Just like that camel did. <laughs> I don't know what we just picked up off the back of that, but... Oh! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, my boo. Happy birthday hmm. to you. Oh, how cute. Try hard. This is why you're divorced. <laughs> I'm sure Patricia wouldn't list that as the only reason. Stuff? I may be running late, but I can assure you it's not poison. I will see you when I find somewhere to chill at. See you then. Actually, I think I found this. Okay, it's the park where I was chilling at. Cool, cool. Well, let's chill. Right here again, yo. Okay. Press play again. Because I lost track of time decorating my house. The aim is to have me back online next week for finding the storm's let up. So long enough for the engineers to work on it. I'll keep you updated. Oscar. Oh, poor Oscar. Let's see what we found down there first. Alright, so this is Nick. What's your names? My name is Tyree, and I'm my family. Surface trips are still progressing Jennifer, I'm Sim Walker. Cool, cool. What's your name? This cycle has... It's been a tough That's right. And I'm a dinner. Morale around the team remains good but, no. as the storm season approaches. Most are looking forward to a break. The power oh, outages geez. here don't help, but... We've done our I'm best seven. Damage. You. Okay, short and sweet for I... Nick. System servers you. are currently offline still. So we've got Shit. the drill site. Oh, look how crazy that sisters, looks. Basically. Drill site, drill bay Not hangar. Sisters, sisters, but security station. You know. Okay, something tells me I've got to okay. get there pretty soon. Find out if we can find more of these cameras to what's going on or find out who was there. Also, I'm going to put a little clip on screen right now because I did replay chapter one just to kind of familiarize myself with everything again. And I did notice when we were going to that first airlock, so there was nine. somebody over to the right hand side going into another entrance. Isaac. Which I'm guessing um, might I'm be the person who we saw when we were down in the bed bay. But just something that I noticed yeah, that I, I wanted to tell you guys know about. Here. Yeah, basically. Whoa! And how do you? I didn't notice that before. 24 years old. We go through there. Cool. Main hangar. I gotta try it right. It says locked. Have access. We do. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is a big old space. Oh! <clears throat> so do you wish have? No. That to do that, single. Something gets thrown or did cool. it? Jack. Don't what maybe. So. I love you. Right at me. I love you. Ah. We love you no too. Uh, I'm, I'm not the only one searching in the dark. Was it defective? I'll check. Cool, cool. Hold on a second. It was like here. And then it curled around the corner like that. That was intentional. There's no way that's so, just dislodged. Can you get us pregnant? Ourselves another poster. Your phone. Again, I can't promise I'm going to find all of those, but if, if I do come across them, I will remember to pick them up. Anytime. Just another one of the ones that we found before. Titan, autonomous, excavation fleet. You remember when they first introduced Titans? Excavators? Yeah. <laughs> I still remember the redundancies. That'll be us at some point. Well, they will always need someone to fix them. I guess so. Yeah, nice yep, tips, nope, by the way. <laughs> I had like a nice brain moment house. for a second. I just wanted to do a bit of exploration, but... It seems Thank in you. working order. I... Yeah, okay. At least it was. Well, keep your guard up and get that generator back on. Roger. So, we're oh going to do it. Okay. Maybe. Just be on your toes, Jack. I'm a little bit worried that we're ha going to have to go in there. Mm. Look at that. <laughs> that does not look safe. Just saying. Like, with everything that's going on, I don't want to add to all the worry that we've got so far. Oh, spot. People trying to kill us. Cool, Massive cool. platforms or whatever that was. Okay, like, so uh, being thrown at us. So, now we can't get in these things. Let's go. 
Cool, cool. Is this where I can follow me? Hello, here we are. My dad owned this business. Cool. I know. My daddy owned this business. Cool, cool. It's a gym. Oh yeah, I can tell basically. And a pole. Do I have to pay or no? You're with me, so it's for free. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, yeah. A pole. What's this way? Another pole. Cool, cool. So it's a gym and yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. I'm surprised no one is here. Yeah, I'm surprised too, but lucky enough. Yeah, lucky enough. Well, let's go to here, dude. Come on, girls, where are you? Over here. Oh, yeah, cool. Go to here. Press play. With Talking out of character for a second. A phone tree. When I spawn free now, my game just crashed. And when I spawn free of these NPCs. You know how here and here, even with, even if I press stay, they would move on their own. Even when I press sit and stay. So that's why only one would do for now, anyway. Well, three to one action. Well, very vulnerable. <laughs> a better tomorrow, Frontier Projects. A better tomorrow is Frontier Projects initiative. With only the best in mind for the future of humanity. Okay, so is that why they're here then? This is bad news. Anytime I've seen that logo, trouble follows. Love you, baby. Oh, is that what have you too, babe? What happened here? That's what you picked up off the table. Right, I'm not going in there yet. Actually, you know what? Is it open? No. no. Alright, we've got to take the elevator then. Hey, I'm looking around too, just in case there's anything that we've missed in terms of like finding out if there's any extra info on the compounds that it was using. I'm guessing compound 23 was the first breakthrough. And then they just continued to try and streamline everything. And eventually something happened when they got to compound 26. Right? <clears throat> I think so. That's a cool elevator, though. Can I call you, Daddy? So funny. Yes. All this. This is the reason they're Thank you, here. Daddy. No wonder such You're an old welcome. base is still operational. So she's making it sound like all of this shouldn't be here, right? Or at least the uh, the Frontiers Initiative. Everywhere she saw that logo, problems followed. Just leaves you with more questions than answers, right? You hear Wyatt? You psychopath! Alright, we've got a door over there. Can we climb that? So, can't do anything with the soil back here either. Oh no, what's this? Oh, we're just going to have a look out on everything. All this. Such a beautiful sight. Even up here. It really is kind of cool what we can achieve. Oh no. Like when you really think 
think about it. We could do something like this. It's not that far-fetched, like I was saying at the beginning. I mean, there would always be problems. There's always issues that would, that would crop up. But, I mean, look at this. We can do stuff like this. That's pretty incredible. I mean, not what Wyatt's doing and what's happened here, because that's... <laughs> If I watch him, I'll right keep there, smashing on. his head. In horror games and horror shit, you know they're not dead dead yet. Unless you shoot the head off or smash the head off. If I was Jack, I would keep smashing him, smashing him, smashing him, smashing him until he got nothing worse besides bones. You watch, he's not actually dead. Jack didn't actually kill him. You fucking watch. Like I said. Told you. See? <laughs> Told you. Have no bond. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I told you, man. If I was him, I'd make sure, like I said, bad guys in horror movies and horror games are hard to kill. I'll make sure. No.
this is another video. Lake in years. This is Not this until guy. I moved back to my hometown recently and remembered what I had tried so desperately to leave behind. As a kid, summer camp was what I lived for. Thoughts of floating in the fathomless, shaded lake, hiking through dense forests of ancient trees, and watching a writhing bonfire oh, and throw and shadows my friend across rock camping. cliffs and young faces this got me through endless mind-numbing school Jonathan? days and strict parenting throughout the year. So, so. It was the only Cut. place I felt that I got to truly be myself, and the Today's place where Friday, I made my what? closest friends. Yeah. When I hit 16, cool. I could finally become a counselor. It had been a goal since I started going to camp at age 10. The lifeguards and camp leaders were nice the height of the my childhood brain. But not then I will was to be we'll go pick up my friends and we'll go my camping. My friend, Josh Whitley, Done. had been a counselor for cool. a year before me. And I couldn't have been more jealous. Josh was a classic extrovert. The always smiling face that made kids Born. feel right at home. He was also a trickster and quick to whisper a dirty joke to the older teens when the adults weren't in earshot. As a counselor, he had less time to spend with me and got much closer to his co-workers. I spent that last summer bitterly jealous. Hmm. I arrived at camp that last year with more excitement than ever and was immediately crushed in a bear hug that lifted me off the ground and knocked all the air from my body. Josh had apparently had a growth spurt during the year and had gained enough muscle mass to make me think he'd bruised a couple of my ribs. Watch it, Godzilla. I coughed when he let me down. He slapped me on the back as I tried to reinflate my lungs. Missed you too. He moved to hug me again and I dodged this time. This is going to be our best summer yet. He promised. Josh took great pride in giving me a tour as a seasoned counselor. I humored him by asking questions anyway. The only areas I hadn't seen before were the ones off limits to the campers. He showed me the office inside the main building where records were kept, the gate at the edge of the property that only the owner had the key to, and most interesting at the time, the wooden shed just beyond the clearing with all the cabins. It turned out that in addition to holding all the toys and equipment, it was also where the counselors went to hang out and to hide from supervisors and campers. He nodded to Kyle no as we entered. Kyle, Jesse, and some others I don't remember the names of were the other counselors that year. They'd already moved the equipment to make space for a set of stools and a small table mostly hidden behind a stack of inflatable rafts. You remember Kyle, right? Josh asked me. Kyle raised his face got hot and Kyle and Josh laughed at me. Come on, I'll take you to your cabin now. You're with the 10 to 11 year olds. Josh dragged me back out of the shed before I had time to look at the equipment further or even greet the others. Each cabin had to have one counselor stay at night to make sure the kids didn't cause trouble. <clears throat> of course, they always made trouble anyway, and I was far I'm from born. innocent. I mean, I so snuck out most nights weed? if the weather was clear that yeah, I could watch I the stars. Cool, cool. A couple years what back though, smoke? Josh yeah. had started sneaking out with cool. me. While he was the life of the party during the day, at night, I felt we really bonded. Josh would always bring a joint or two and we'd make our way to the lakefront to smoke. I'm sure the adults could smell the weed on us the next day, but no one cared. I'd watch the tree line of the opposite shore and listen to Josh's musings on life through the haze of smoke and fog. I think weed makes me paranoid though, because once Josh and his joints showed up, I could never shake the nervous feeling of being on display. The amplified feeling of every eye that crickets, frogs, and owls could turn on us. At the time, I chalked it up to nerves. I was just a shy, awkward kid who wanted Josh to like me more than I could admit even to myself. And the smoking added another How many business? I was too scared of my parents that, um, and too generally clueless to rebel like this during the rest of the year. So my tolerance was low. That's why the night he brought a new street he owns every single by. business. The night he almost drowned in, in the lake. City. We couldn't Old tell business. anyone about his near death Is that experience. Rich, my daddy. I was so scared my parents would oh, drag cool. me away forever. Possibly to a military school like my mom would threaten me with if either of us breathed a word. My thoughts were muddy and slow, tuning in and out of Josh's voice like it was a radio channel when I saw shadows on the opposite shore from the dock we sat on. The dark figure looked like a large man, and I thought it must Thank have you. been the camp's owner, Mr. Stedman, 
Although he was rarely <laughs> seen outside his office back at the main oh, complex, no, I elbowed Josh and gestured at the figure. He jumped slightly and the joint fell from his hand into the dark water beneath our dangling feet, extinguishing with a hiss. It was such a quiet sound, but it made the dark figure's head whip around to face us, body springing to attention like an animal scenting prey. My stomach dropped as I registered that all the animals around us had fallen silent. No crickets, no croaks filling the night as I was used to. J what is it? Let's go to here we do. Done. Press play. If on to a look here. Give it a minute. Let's go over here. Then go over here. Then this way. Then here. Over here. Look here. Come on. I can't press. Helm. A rock. Shit. Yeah, no. Like I said. Yeah, rock. Even if I press it, it will go back to, you know, walk again. So, yeah. The foreign tray is whatever. So, here we we'll do. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. And action. At frozen in horror as the figure practically <coughs> Edge of the lake coming straight towards us. It was so threateningly graceful as it moved along the dark and rocky shore that I knew instantly it was not Mr. Stimby, a veteran with a pronounced limp. My daddy what began as a child's fear of getting oh, caught no, misbehaving daddy. transfigured into a primal terror of an animal meeting its end. With uncanny speed, the figure had already had the distance toward us and was now rounding the large pile of rocks separating it from the dock where we sat. Josh came back to his senses before I did, my mind still mush from the weed. He slid off the dock into the water below and dragged me with him right after. I gasped as I hit the cold water, but it jolted me back into action quickly enough to close my mouth as my head dipped below the surface of the dark water that I avoided filling my lungs with lake. Josh clung to me as our head surfaced again. He was shaking as much as I was, both from fear and cold. But he pulled me close and we huddled under the dock, trying to tread water and cling to each other at the same time. I looked back to the rocks where the figure had last been, and saw nothing. The night was still so quiet. After what felt like ages without any signs of our hunter, I started to swim towards the shore, sure we were no longer being stalked. But as soon as I splashed audibly, we heard footfalls on rock, then onto the creaking wood of the dock. Josh hauled me back into deep shadow, and we shuddered together in renewed fear. There was a sniffing sound and low grumbles. I braved a look upward and saw moonlight through the gaps between wooden boards. It disappeared as heavy steps shook the old structure. Whatever it was walked all the way to the end, stopped for an excruciating minute, and just as I thought it had given up, dove into the lake with a giant splash. I saw the bulking form hit the water. And in the surge that followed, Josh and I took off through the water faster than we'd ever raced each other before. The surge of adrenaline and my screaming muscles were going just in the ahead morning, of Josh, guys. and I almost when reached I'm the shore that closest that to camp when I heard him scream. The sound pierced my ears despite the water that had filled them. I never heard Josh scream, so never now. heard Damn him so. cry Damn even when he broke his arm at 13 Damn after that. falling out of a tree. I whipped around just in time to see him dragged downward. 
His open mouth filled with water, and his scream turned into a gurgle. I grabbed for his outstretched hand and managed a tenuous grip on his wrist, then his arm, and finally a firm hold on his shirt, still submerged in the water. I yanked with one hand twisted into fabric and the other arm around Josh's back, and somehow managed to wrench his superior weight free from where he was trapped. His head re-emerged, coughing and spitting up water, and moments later, we flopped onto the ground, thoroughly exhausted. My head felt clearer than it had all night, but I thought I must still be high. I stared out across the lake and it was as still as glass. No sign of movement, not even wind rippling the water. It was like I imagined the whole thing. I could hear insects again, and the occasional owl. The signs of life resumed as if nothing had disturbed them. Perhaps I had imagined the unnatural silence too. Josh panted next to me, alternately gulping in air and spitting up water. I had one hand pressed to his back, and his skin burned even through his sodden shirt. Once Josh had recovered his breathing, I checked him over for damage. He was missing one shoe, but otherwise unharmed. I hoped it had just gotten stuck on something in the lake. The alternative thought, that the creature we'd seen had almost drowned Josh, was too much to bear. Finally, I broke the silence. What the hell was that? It sounded sharp in the quiet of the night. I couldn't stop scanning the water looking for movement, waiting for something to happen. Josh turned to look at me now. Fucking Kyle. He grumbled after he'd spit a last mouthful of water. We started a prank war last year, but this is way too far. I only realized how tense I'd been when an involuntary laugh escaped me. I wanted to believe that the figure that had hunted us was just Kyle, and not what I'd begun to suspect. Josh glared at me. I almost died dude, not funny. Sorry, I said. That was messed up. I'm just glad it was Kyle and not some sort of you know, some kind of monster. Oh he'll look like a monster once I'm through with him. Josh grumbled. Tomorrow I'm gonna fuck him up. Once Josh could breathe normally again, we got up and made our way back to the cabins. Josh didn't even look back, but I couldn't shake the prickling sensation along the back of my neck that told me we were being watched. Miraculously, the kids I was supposed to be watching were still sleeping as I crept back to bed. But I couldn't sleep that night. Each time I drifted off, I dreamed Josh was drowning, being dragged deep into the lake by a creature much bigger, much stronger than Kyle. Josh confronted Kyle in the storage shed the next day as we were supposed to be preparing for recreational time. It was just the three of us taking down equipment. I'd missed Josh that morning as he'd skipped breakfast and the bags under his eyes told me he'd slept at least as badly as I had. Kyle and I each held one side of a canoe when Josh suddenly punched Kyle straight in the nose without any warning or restraint. Kyle and his side of the canoe both dropped, and it was all I could do to keep the entire thing from falling right on top of him as he hit the ground cradling his bleeding nose. Standing over him, Josh looked furious in a way I didn't even know he was capable of. His fists were clenched, shoulders shaking with rage, and his red-rimmed eyes had pinpoint pupils. That's for your little prank last night, asshole. He spat down at Kyle, who was still disoriented and quietly groaning. Since you tried to kill me, I decided to return the favor. He raised his foot to kick Kyle in the ribs. But Kyle has apparently regained enough wherewithal to knock Josh over while he was unbalanced. Josh fell backward into a pile of water toys that went scattering across the crowded space. The fuck? Kyle screamed, and blood ran into his mouth when it opened. Reluctantly, I dropped my end of the canoe and stood between them. Josh might have had the element of surprise at first, but now it looked like Kyle might actually finish the job and kill him. I put a hand out as if Ready? it might actually do something. Yeah. You tried to drown me last night. Boy, that. Good girl. I oh, know. Let's do this. Right here. Well, I will see you in the morning, I guess. See you then.